Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, R6230. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, you can buy me a coffee. Half of all coffees I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. So, the first step is to power on the router. Connect one end of the power adapter to a wall socket and the other end to the router. Then press the power button. Once it's on, an indicator will light up. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Now, connect a cable from your broadband provider or from your modem to a special internet port. This port is often called internet and is usually a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into a LAN port. Plug the other end into your computer or laptop's Ethernet card. Please, wait a few minutes for connection. Great, the router is now connected to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But before we begin, I will demonstrate an alternative way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Just connect the router to the power adapter and the cable from your Internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will be named as your router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password that is printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and visit the URL displayed on your screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then in both features make your selection and click apply. Now you must select no. I want to configure the internet connection myself. And click next button. And then click OK. If the settings on your router don't look like mine, then your router has a different firmware. I have created a video for every type of firmware. You can find all the links to them in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The password for the admin is used to log into the web interface of your router. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write new password in the first field and duplicate it in the second field. Next, choose two security questions and write answers to them. You will need them in case you need to reset the admin password at some point in the future. Click Next. On the next page, you will see the information you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next button. If the router hasn't been updated in a while, the next page might initiate the firmware update. 
I recommend upgrading the firmware to the latest version, if it is available. It will take about 3 minutes for firmware update. Please, do not turn off the power or press reset button. If the new firmware is not available, just click OK. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. If you want it, you can do it. I'm just going to close this window, because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again, if you are logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. In the top right corner, you can modify the language of the router's website interface. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Setup Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. Select Internet Settings on the next page. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in the contract you have with your internet service provider. If your internet connection does not require a login, or you do not know whether require a login or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Select Get Dynamically from ISP in the Internet IP Address section. In Domain Name Server section, choose Get Automatically from ISP also. If your Internet Service Provider only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address, you will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. Select Use Default MAC Address if you are not sure about these settings. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. There is no need to clone the MAC address in most cases. But if you can't get an internet connection after the quick setup, I'll show you how to clone the MAC address later in the video. Now you must reboot the router. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click OK. After the reboot, wait a few minutes and try to Google something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected correctly. Then log into the router control panel again. Go to Advanced. Setup. Internet Setup. And choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then Reboot Router again. After a couple of minutes, check internet connection. That's all. I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a coffee. Every pint of coffee helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you.